Hello friends, this is Anders Ibsen with Windermere Professional Partners, managing broker of Anders Ibsen Homes. Now if you're a North End property owner like me, you're probably having some questions about the market right now. Given recent changes due to historically high inflation and higher interest rates, there have certainly been a lot of changes. Now if you're curious about how the North End might be faring differently or similarly to certain neighborhoods in the area, like anything else, it all comes down to numbers. So let's take a look. Back in 2021, your average North End price was about $572,500 compared to the city average of about $447,000. Now in the last year, since 2022, due to the massive changes we saw, there was a little bit of a dip. Here in the North End, we saw about a 1% drop to about $566,000 compared to the city of Tacoma, which saw almost a 2.5% drop to $435,000. So in other words, your typical North End house actually held its value more than twice as well as your average city of Tacoma house. But why is that the case? Why the disparity? Well, my theory is that there's safety in the middle. What I mean by that is that anytime you have economic volatility, usually the extremes of the price range tend to feel the effect the worst. At the lower end, what this really means is entry-level housing, and in particular, first-time buyers. What you have affecting those people primarily is rate sensitivity, because when rates doubled, as they did last year, not only did monthly payments get higher, which of course made people less than comfortable, but it ultimately ruled out a significant amount of buyers. A lot of people just could not afford that $400,000 or $500,000 house at 6% interest like they could at 3%. And so as a result, you see a disproportionate cooling in some of those neighborhoods compared to the middle. On the higher end, on the other hand, what you have is luxury housing, and the issue there is not so much affordability so much as the stock market, because so many upscale buyers have so much of their wealth tied into private securities like stocks, bonds, retirement accounts, that when the market shifted abruptly from a bull market to a bear market, not only did a lot of their disposable income go away, but being financially savvy people, they're just simply not willing to pay 2022 prices for 2023 realities. And so as a result, we've seen even larger dips with luxury markets. For example, in the city of Bellevue, in the last year, we saw a 15% drop in the average home sale price. Pretty brutal. Whereas what I think you see in the middle is that you have kind of a Goldilocks zone where your typical buyer has assets to make the sale work. If they have to move, they're going to move and they may be less than comfortable with the monthly payment and thereby expect some kind of discount, but their assets are not so tied up in the marketplace as to be directly affected as much as with luxury. So that's why we've seen houses kind of in the middle of the price range for the reason do the best in terms of retaining their value, like here in the North End. But what about recessions? Is this the start of a housing crash? Are we gonna see values plummet like they did back in 2009 and 2010? Well, like anything else, it just comes down to numbers. So let's look at the key facts, in particular, looking at things like supply and demand, where prices are heading, and just the average number of days on market. How fast can you sell a house? With supply and demand, the best way of looking at it is just what the ratio is of sales to actively listed properties. The insider term for this in real estate is what's called months of housing supply. And in plain speak, what that basically means is if there were no more new listings that went on the market or no more houses being built, at the rate that buyers are buying, how long would it take them to exhaust the housing supply? Generally, anything three months or less is considered a shortage, anything three to six months is considered a balanced market, and anything six months or higher is considered an oversupplied buyer's market. Now, any guesses how many months of supply Tacoma has? About one and a half. It's actually still a significant shortage, even though it may not feel like that. It's kind of a paradox, but the reason we see an uptick in listings is not because there's a flood of new listing activity, but because a lot of the older listings are just not leaving because the sellers have overpriced them. So that's one of the paradoxes there, but generally speaking, it's still a shortage. What about prices? Are prices crashing? Are they appreciating or are they staying the same? Well, generally, if you compare today's home sale prices to last year's when bidding wars were common, your average 2021 and 2022 home sale price was on average about 3% higher than the list price, which means that bidding wars were super common. Bidding wars are not super common anymore, but you're not really seeing a plummeting either. What you usually tend to see is that for accurately priced listings, it usually just sells for list price. 
your average sale price in Tacoma and here in the North End is about 100% of the list price. So prices aren't really plummeting, but they're not significantly appreciating either. They're just kind of even keel. Then finally, time on market. Time on market has noticeably gone up. Back during the previous market, your average time on market was the weekend, basically, about three to five days on average. If you priced it more or less correct, you would have a bidding war and then you'd tie it up. That is no longer the case, but it still hasn't changed dramatically, just noticeably. Now the average time on market for your typical Tacoma house is roughly two to three weeks if you price your home correctly. This is actually an area where the north end is doing noticeably better because on average, the typical north end house is only on the market for about 10 to 12 days, so half of the city average. So if you just look at the facts, if you look at relatively stable prices, continued shortage of inventory, and a relatively fast marketing time, these are not signs of a collapsing housing market. What these are, are signs of a stabilizing housing market because the market is just catching its breath due to higher interest rates. But if you're watching this video, you're probably just curious about price. How are prices in our neighborhood changing? And I won't disappoint you, don't worry. What's kind of interesting is that if you look at today's median price for the entire North End, it's pretty much the same as it was a year ago in first quarter 2022 at roughly $600,000. We saw some appreciation at the start of the year, then interest rates doubled and we saw a little bit of cooling. But generally speaking, homes have held their value. Now, as I've said repeatedly, I'm very adamant about this, there are many North Ends. We are not a homogenous cookie cutter neighborhood. Part of our charm and part of the reason people like our neighborhood so much is that there are many distinct, unique little pocket neighborhoods with their own special characteristics. So let's talk a little bit about some of them. If you're looking at neighborhoods like the Proctor District, for example, you're looking at an average right now of about $725,000. The Salt, around $590,000. The North Slope, at about $615,000. And the Stadium District, interestingly, has fallen to now only a $1.2 million median price. And that brings me to an interesting contrast with last year in terms of what's happened to luxury housing. Last year, I made the point that due to the bull market and the stock market, low interest rates, and just overall shortage conditions, luxury around here was really hot because among other reasons, a million dollars gets you a really nice house around here, whereas in more expensive markets, a million dollars is a mediocre to above average house. And while that factor may still be the case, we've definitely seen some cooling here in the local luxury market. Not as extreme as in more expensive markets like up north, but we've seen, for example, in the last year that million dollar plus home sales in Tacoma saw an 8% drop in the median price. And now the typical sale price for a million dollar home in Tacoma is about 3% less than the list price on average. But is this a crash? Are we seeing luxury homes in the luxury home market plummet? And my answer to that is no, because what we're really seeing is a return to normalcy. Because historically, luxury has always been a buyer's market. There are almost always more luxury homes available than high net worth buyers for that kind of product. And what we're just seeing now is the market returning to a little bit more of a status quo in this respect. I wouldn't lose sleep over it. So what can we expect moving forward into 2023 for the North End? Well, no one has that kind of clairvoyance. No one has a crystal ball. But what most experts will tell you is that it really just comes down to interest rates. We're seeing a somewhat cooling of, of interest rates, and by cooling I mean we're probably going to see them fall into the high 5% range by later in the year. And if interest rates continue their trajectory downward, we'll probably see a little bit more appreciation. Whereas if rates rise or just maintain their current position, we'll probably see a status quo or we'll probably see a little bit more cooling. Uh, but generally speaking, it's probably going to be a pretty boring year, honestly, in terms of values. And that's not a bad thing. We can't continue to have appreciation of 15% year after year. That's not good for anyone. And as I've covered before, even if there is some kind of recession that happens later in the year, whatever form that takes, if it's just a mild correction or something more serious, as I've covered before, recessions don't really crash home prices historically. They usually stabilize them. So moving forward, if there's really one takeaway from this video I want you to have, it's this. Regardless of the current challenges we face, the North End as a whole remains a resilient home market. And we usually tend to outperform the regional average. And homes in our neighborhood will always continue to be a solid investment. Whether you're a homeowner in the North End, you're considering moving here, or if you just have questions in general about the home market, I'm always happy to talk. You're welcome at any point to call, text, or email me, 
and I'm happy to take your questions or your feedback. Thank you so much for watching. This is Anders Ibsen with Windermere Professional Partners, managing broker of Anders Ibsen Homes. Have a wonderful day.